Hey, everybody. We're early. Well, we're actually late. We're an hour later than usual because I had something to do this afternoon. So uh, we're on a little later. I hope this this time works for people. And we'll just sit here and kind of chill out until uh, until we see that there's some some people because I can see how many of you are out there. I have a I have a secret counter that I can I can tell how many of you are watching. So there's 13 of you right now. I hope we get more than that today. Ed's here. And Ed, I know I know you've been asking for a saltwater fly, so we're doing a saltwater fly for you today. And you're ready to tie and this is this is um, it's a pretty easy one. Uh, it's a good fly. It's a very effective fly. It's one of my one of my favorite flies for your part of the world, Ed, in Florida. Um, but uh, it's it's a it's a really good one, and some some of the good flies are are quite simple. So, and there are yeah, I know you've been waiting a while, Ed, for a saltwater fly, and there <laughs> there aren't really. There aren't really any secrets to tying this simple fly. I mean, you know, some simple flies like the Clouser minnow and the uh, woolly bugger are quite simple, but there's, you know, there's some, some little tricks to making, to tying them right. And this one, it's hard to screw this one up. So, uh, but it's a good fly. And um, I'll tell you about it as soon as we get a few more people on here so that I don't have to repeat myself. Hope everybody's doing well, enjoying the fall. We still have some foliage here in Vermont. Um, about half, half the leaves are still on. And so it, it's kind of pretty. It's not quite what we call stick season when it's kind of just gray and there's no leaves on the trees. That'll happen in November. But that'll be good because leaves on the trees make the trout fishing really lousy. Um, all the leaves blow, uh, flowing through the water really put the trout off and um, they really slow down on their, on their feeding. Apparently they slow down. They, sh they sure do for me. And then once the leaves get off the trees, now that we have year round fishing in both Vermont and New York, um, we'll be able to, chase some fish on nymphs and streamers and maybe even some midges, hopefully. So I was just down in outside of Boston on Saturday with the South Shore Flycasters. We did a little tying session, then I did a presentation and they're still catching, they're still catching striped bass on Cape Cod. There's still some around, so that's pretty cool. Um, it was a nice day. It was a nice weekend. So Ed says, you can tell it's autumn in Florida when the license plates change colors. Yeah. You probably see a lot of Vermont plates down there, Ed, in the fall. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a really good one. All right. So I think we're going to start. I think, uh, I think, uh, again, yeah, we had enough people to, to do this. Um, so this is um, this is a snook fly. It's called Grasset snook minnow, and um, again, it's a it's a really simple pattern. And it was developed by uh, a guy named Rick Grasset, who has been with he's been an Orvis endorsed guide for a long time. I don't know, maybe thirty years, 25, 30 years. Uh, he works out of CB's uh, in CB's uh, shop in. Uh, Sarasota, Florida, and I, I fished with Rick. I've, I have fished with Rick a number of times. He's a terrific guide. If you ever are in that in that area, um, we've chased tarpon and snook and false albacore. Uh, you know, there's some pretty good false albacore fishing in the wintertime off Sarasota, and not many people not many people chase them. And this fly will also is also a good uh, fly. I've caught false albacore on this fly. I have caught um, caught snook on it for sure because it's a snook fly. Caught striped bass on it too. 
Uh, so it's a, you know, it's a good generic saltwater fly when there's, there's small bait fish, but um, where this, I think, where I think this fly really shines is for uh, snook fishing under the light, under dock lights. You know, it's, re it's really fun to, to tool around the, the canals and the, the bays and things in Florida at night. And um, people leave these dock lights out that attract shrimp and minnows. And then the snook come into the lights and pound these shrimp and minnows. And they can be quite difficult. They can be really spooky and selective. And um, I find this fly to be, I find this fly to be really effective. It's got a light weight on it. You don't want too heavy of a fly when you're fishing under the lights because you want, you want the fly to just kind of suspend. You want it to sink a little bit, but you don't want it to sink too deep. So it has bee chain eyes on it and it's all white. I'm sure you could tie it in different colors, but white seems to be a good color uh, under the lights for snook. And um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a great little fly. It's clean. It's easy to cast. Uh, there was a question, could you use this for freshwater bass? I would think so. Yeah, it's a bait fish imitation, Roger. So I, th I think you could use it for nearly anything. I know it'd be a deadly fly on crappie uh, because they like, they like white flies and they like little, little sinking flies. So, um, be good for crappie. It'd probably be good for smallmouth. I'm not so sure about largemouth unless they're on smaller bait, but, um, yeah, could, could be similar to a murdoch minnow. Yeah. But a lot, a lot simpler Ricky than a murdoch minnow, a hell of a lot simpler. Um, all right. So, that is that is the um, that is the story on the grasset snook minnow, and I think I'll I, th I think I'll start tying. So, Julie is here. Say hi, Julia. Hi. Good afternoon. Nice to see everybody. <laughs> Happy I, tying. I'll take you off because I know you hate being on screen. Thank <laughs> but anyway, Julie's here, and so if we have if we have any questions as I'm tying it, I don't see them. Uh, Julia will will read them out to me, and uh, it's basically a schmino with an EP tail. I don't know what a schmino is, Snook Slayer, but uh, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, it's a, it's a very it's a very simple fly. It won't take me long to tie it, so ask uh, ask all the questions you want. I don't know how many questions there are going to be on this fly. So there's what it looks like um, when it's done. Pretty straightforward. All white. Yeah, I'm sure you could tie this in, in black and yellow and different colors if you wanted to. And I'm sure you could tie it with different materials than I'm tying. But uh, this is the way Rick ties it. So this is the way I'm going to tie it. And I am going to start with a standard uh, pre-sharpened saltwater hook. And you can tie this down as small as a size 8 or even a 10. So sometimes you need a fairly small fly for these snook. Um, I'm going to tie it in a 4 today. You can tie it in a 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 if you wanted to. I'm going to grab a size 4 hook. Make it a little easier for people to see things. And you could probably tie it on lots of different kinds of saltwater hooks, too. And I'm going to securely place the hook in my vise. See if that looks straight. That looks straight. Yeah, let's center this thing a little bit. Whoops. Whoa, sorry about that. I loosened my camera. There we go. Okay. So, uh, I'm using chartreuse thread just because that's what the pattern calls for. I'm sure you could use white thread too, but it adds a little bit of a little bit of color to the front of the fly. When you tie it and so i'm just going to start my thread you can start your thread on this fly right up by the eye i'm using 3o 
or 140 denier chartreuse thread. And don't be afraid to, to get some nice tight turns and cover that, cover that shank a little bit there. And unlike a lot of flies with eyes, uh, you don't need to place the eyes too far back. You know, on a clouser minnow, I might want to go way back here, some way back here somewhere, because um, you need room to finish off the fly. But um, you don't with this fly. So you could put that those eyes really, uh, those uh, bee chain eyes really close to the eye of the hook on this fly. And then I'm going to take some bead chain. Some gold bead chain, size medium. And take it out of the package. And I forgot my cutters. I gotta go get my wire cutters because I don't want to use my I don't want to use my good scissors to cut that bead chain. I got my nice beefy cutters here. Cut two of them off. The one thing, if you um, if you're tying saltwater flies and you use bead chain, you don't want to you don't want to try to save yourself a few extra cents and just use bead chain from the hardware store because it's not plated and it, it'll tend to rust and corrode. These are these uh, bead chain that you buy for fly tying are are uh, plated so they're corrosion resistant resistant for salt water and then i like to put as i do with a lot of eyes i like to put a drop of super glue on here tom we have a couple questions okay here let me make myself small so we can focus on the um bill's asking what size would you tie this for a uh, crappy and for small mouth i'd use a four or a six Okay. And then um, Mark's asking if this could imitate shad for freshwater stripers. Yeah, if you made it bulkier. If you made it if you made it bulkier than what I'm doing here, if you used a I'm gonna use a small size Estes. If you used uh uh more of a heavier uh uh sparkle chenille that's longer and then trimmed it maybe and then put about twice as much ep fiber and maybe a little shorter than what i'm doing here yeah that would that would you could make a, a shad out of it uh-huh great that's it for now okay yeah good questions so what i've done here is i've gone crosswise a few times this way and then crosswise this way and don't be afraid to build that up and then once I get those cross wraps, I'm going to make sure my eyes are straight. They should be. I'm going to come around the base of these eyes and I'm going to put as much pressure as I can on those. The last thing you want is to finish this fly and find out that the eyes are going to wiggle and no amount of glue after you finish the fly is going to help. You need to I find that that what what really rolls when you put a pair of eyes on the shank is the thread underneath tends to roll. So by putting that drop of super glue on there, those eyes are going to stay put. They're not going to roll even after you catch a fish or two. They're not going to roll. Okay, so um, now I'm just going to take my thread back to the bend of the hook. I like to cover the shank before I put the tail on. It, it, it helps hold it a little bit more securely to have some thread on the hook. And then I'm gonna take some EP fiber. I think you could use any synthetic, uh, any synthetic fiber. You could probably even use bucktail for the tail of this. And I'm gonna get a moderate amount, you know, maybe a, a pencil diameter of EP fiber. The synthetic is nice because it sheds water and it doesn't, um, 
when you have one little false cast and the um, one little false cast and this will this will shake off the water so it makes it easier to cast and lands lighter and I might taper the end of this just a little bit by just kind of tweaking it give it give it a little taper like so just so it has a little bit of a minnow taper and I like the the tail on this to be about a shank length maybe a little bit longer so I'll measure that I'll hold it there and then what I can do is just come in with my scissors and trim it off and now I'm ready to tie it in and I'm just gonna put my finger on the far side to keep it from rolling around the shank and then come forward and you can just kind of use your fingers to keep that on the shank you can go back and forth a couple times if you want to clean it up that's going to be all covered up so it doesn't really matter so there's about the length of the tail i'm sure the length of the tail here so about to there a little shorter a little longer won't hurt it you can experiment make sure we're in focus there and then gonna take I'm, I like I don't like a lot of flash on my flies, so I'm just going to take two strands of crystal flash. I don't think you need a lot of flash on this fly, just enough to add a little bit of a sparkle to it. So I'm going to separate two strands of crystal flash. I'm going to put it in my mouth and wet it. makes it easier to handle and then I am just going to fold this over the thread like so and come in and secure that with a couple wraps and then what I like to do is separate two on each side you know, so they're equally divided. So if they're going to come down the center of that tail and just hold them there and then come back with my thread. And now I've got my crystal flash along either side. And I'm going to just trim the crystal flash equal with the end of the tail hard to see that there in the picture and they should just those pieces should should just extend down the side you can look at it from the other side i don't think it really matters as long as you just have a little flash introduced into there and next i'm going to take some Estes or cactus chenille or, you know, any one of these, what I, I call them kind of generic sparkle chenille in, in pearl white. And I like the font, I like the small size. I don't like the body on this too thick. You know, if you were, if you were tying this to imitate a shad, then you'd want to use a, a real big, heavy, heavy type, but I'm, I'm going to use uh I'm going to make this fairly small. And there's my piece of cactus chenille or estes. And I am, oh, first thing I'm going to do before I go to that is I'm going to just expose the threads on the end of that, like you would with any chenille. Just take your thumbnail and kind of 
pull some of that tinsel off. So you got a little attachment point there. And just tie that in nice and securely. Don't need too many wraps to keep this stuff in place because that that those those pieces of thread really uh, really tie in easily and they don't add any bulk. Now I'm just going to come forward. Tom, we Did have I a see? question from Travis. Yeah, Travis is asking if you have to use gink to keep this afloat. No, you you don't want this floating. You want this to sink it. slowly. And that's why uh, it's got bead chain eyes on it. They help it sink a little bit, but they don't sink it too deep and too fast. Um, Great. Yeah, you, you, you wouldn't want to put any kind of, you wouldn't want to or need to put any kind of dressing on this fly. It's not a, not a dry fly, not a floating fly. Might work good as a floating fly. But not this pattern. And then you just kind of hold the tail out of the way and just wind this stuff. You can stroke it back a little bit to make it look a little neater if you want. Just kind of stroke it back as you wind it. Whoops. And then maybe take an extra turn or two behind the eyes just to build it up, just a slight taper there. And you tie it off. Nice and securely. And move your thread out of the way. When you cut that chenille, take a couple more turns just to make sure it's in there. Come forward. And you maybe want to build up a little bit of a head so you see a little bit of that chartreuse there. And whip finish. And then put a drop of whatever, uh, whatever your little heart desires to finish that off so that it doesn't unravel. In this fly, you don't really see much of the head, so you can get away with just using super glue or head cement or if you want UV cure epoxy. A little drop to protect those uh, thread wraps. And that is a snook minnow. So very simple, very straightforward, uh, but a very effective fly for snook, particularly under the lights at night. And that is it. That is all you need to do. So pretty straightforward. We got any other questions? If you wanted it to float, you could add a foam gurgler hood on it. Ah, March Brian, I done. Hello. Um, yeah. Yeah, you could put a foam gurgler hood on, on it. That would be kind of cool. With the chain eyes tied on top of the hook, won't the fly swim upside down? Yes, it'll 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 swim upside down, but doesn't matter because the thing is the same any way you look at it. So yeah, you want it you want it to ride hook up. It's less likely to snag on things. So yep, it will ride upside down. Would have enjoyed 
Tim Flagler tie, yeah, that would have been a, a real tough competition. Let's see, what other questions? Nice and easy, great to catch a variety of fish. Yep. Yeah, that's, um, let's see, do we have any other? Could you fish this in any kind of surf? Yeah, you could. You could, Mark. You could try it in the surf. Um, if I were fishing it in the surf for snook or anything else, I might put, uh, lead eyes on it. I might put uh, solid metal eyes on it to get it down um, in the surf because there's often there's often more current there. And um, yeah, if you're like fishing the beach for a snook, you might you might want to try some, especially if it's a little bit deeper. You might want to try some lead eyes, but uh, I think it'll work it'll work fine this way for um, for the surf as well. Rick Grasset is watching. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I didn't even tell Rick I was doing this today. Rick, well, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're here, and I hope I, I hope I did you justice. If you want to add any other comments, Rick, uh, uh, please add them. These work great up near Lake Tahoe, and well, that's cool. Would you be willing to do a tying meeting over Zoom for our group? Uh, Derek, no, I don't, I don't, I don't do those things over Zoom. I, I do it in StreamYard for Orvis, but I don't, I don't do them over Zoom. Ed fishes it in Tampa Bay using an intermediate line. Okay, very cool. So Rick, what did I miss? Give us some. Give us some tips now that you're watching. <laughs> I'm constantly experimenting with. Oh, here, let me put this. Let me put this comment up. This is from the originator. Orange eyes and thread. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Have to try that. Rick, what else have you caught with this fly? I know snook, false albacore, uh, speckled trout, probably. What else have you caught? Have you caught tarpon with it? See if Rick, uh, see if Rick has a, a list of species. And here's the answer. Oh, Spanish mackerel, yeah. And a weed guide for shallow water. Uh -huh. And triple tail of the weed guard. Cool. Well, that is great. And if, if any of you uh, ever have a chance to fish with Rick, it's it's a real it's a real treat. Uh, he's a Great guide and a and a wonderful person to be on the water with. He doesn't yell at you, as some guides do. He's very mellow, and uh, you can reach Rick uh, through Seabees uh, in Sarasota or uh, his website. I think is Snookfin Addict SnookfinAddict.com. I think that's what your website is, Rick. So um, by all means, if you're in the Sarasota area. Um, look Rick up and um, hopefully he'll have a he'll have a day available for you. I highly recommend fishing with Rick. No tarpon, but I do use as does body flies with bunny tails most of the time for tarpon. So similar. Similar fly, but with a uh, uh, rabbit tail instead of the uh, EP fiber for tarpon. Wow, William is watching in Iraq by way of Butte, Montana. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I assume you're in the service there, William.
All right, everyone. Well, I don't have anything else to show you. It's a pretty straightforward fly. Um, next Monday, we're going to tie another simple fly. So I promise you we'll get into some more complicated ones later. But we're going to tie. We actually got to tie two, um, two flies next week. I'm going to tie a, a Griffith's gnat, standard, straightforward Griffith's gnat. And then I'm going to tie a double Griffith's gnat, which is two two little tiny Griffiths on one hook, which is great when you've got little tiny midges and you don't want to use a little tiny hook. Um, so um, that's what we're going to do next Monday. And next Monday will also be at four o'clock because I have a I have a meeting in the afternoon next Monday, so I have to do it at four. So um, you know we we normally do this at three o'clock. Eastern time, but um, it'll be four next week, and then we'll go back to three o'clock. Split back PMD. I already did a split back PMD, Mark. I don't know if I did it with Tim, but we already tied one. Can you ask Rick why he uses EP instead of Marabou? That's a good question. Rick, you want to answer that? If you're still there. I don't see Rick may have left us or he may be typing his answer. So we'll wait a minute before we sign off here. Let's see if Rick's got a. Okay. So Rick was looking for a smaller profile. Yeah. Marabou tends to puff up a little bit more. So it gives you a little bit broader profile. Um, so there's your answer. And EP sheds, as March Brown I done says, uh, EP sheds water faster. It's easier to cast. Ed says, if you use marabou, it's a schmino. Okay. And now I know what a schmino is. <laughs> I finally found, I've been wondering all my life what a schmino was, Ed. And I want to thank you for that. All right, everyone. Well, um, th I know it's a short one, but we started late today, so I want to I want to thank you all for tuning in, and uh, we will see you next Monday at four o'clock if you're available. I don't think we're going to have a tie-off with Flagler in November. Uh, Tim and I have got a kind of busy travel schedules, and Tim and I are also tying, having two live tie-offs at the uh, at the International Fly Tying Symposium in november so if you want to come and, and kibitz and tease us uh, live uh, please join us there in new jersey um, other than that we'll uh, we'll probably start back with the tie-offs in december so anyway that's the story for this week i want to thank you all for coming those are some great questions and um, good luck with your tying and with your fishing and uh, We'll see you soon.